Creta 5.1 introduced a few updates, which I'd like to demonstrate for you today. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. First are the new options for filling line art. There is a new continuous fill mode for the paint bucket, which allows you to fill multiple areas of similar color by clicking and dragging across them. You'll want to turn on reference all layers so that you can fill on a layer that is separate from the line art layer. Next is the enclose and fill tool. This will allow you to use a selection tool like the rectangular, elliptical, lasso, or selection brush to encompass an area you'd like to fill, and the algorithm will detect differences in color or transparency and fill the area intelligently. You will likely need to adjust the fill properties to get an acceptable fill. For instance, increasing the threshold will encompass more of a color range. Growing the fill by one pixel can ensure that the fill doesn't abruptly end where it meets the line art. And by selecting the color you want to fill, in this case white, you can avoid filling the wrong areas. This mode works fairly well, but there are instances where it becomes more difficult to use than the other methods. Usually it leaves gaps in the paint where it didn't fill enough, or it often overfills. A lot of this depends on the resolution of the artwork and the width and aliasing of the lines. If the artwork is small and the lines are very anti-aliased, the fill will struggle to distinguish the lines from the areas to be filled. Another problem is that if there are any small gaps in the lines, the tool will not work. You'll have to manually close the gaps first. I can fidget with the threshold settings to try to make the tool more cooperative, but the more time I add to the workflow, the less sense it makes to use this method to fill everything. You may have to touch up some areas that weren't filled using a brush. Still, it can get the bulk of your filling done, which you really can't complain about. For example, you may just want to fill your line art with a single color to separate it from the background. This tool makes that incredibly easy. To be honest, I don't know why so many art apps still utilize the traditional flood fill method when so many innovative options now exist. Drag and drop has also been improved so that you can now use the fill options to decide how the fill is applied. Best of all, you can add all of your color to a single layer and then have Krita automatically separate the colors into individual layers that are named based on the color. If you've spent a considerable amount of time coloring line art, comics, or manga the old fashioned way, stop. This is so much more efficient. The next feature we'll explore is the ability to subdivide the ruler guides by a specific interval. There are a lot of instances where you want to measure something and then divide it equally. For instance, I can draw this snake, create a ruler guide that matches its length, and then subdivide the ruler to show the different ways I can subdivide the snake to create stripes. This is a small but powerful feature that I would love to see extended to the other assistant modes. And now for another guide related feature. While many art applications offer perspective drawing guides, few offer guides that specialize in drawing ellipses in perspective. Creta 5.1 features a new perspective ellipse mode in the assistant tool. I'll zoom out quite a bit. And first I will select the assistant tool and choose the two point perspective mode. I'll click on either side of the canvas, leaving some distance between the vanishing points and the canvas edges. Then I'll click once more in the center of the canvas. Now that I have a perspective defined, let's select the perspective ellipse mode. Because every ellipse is contained within an invisible tetragon, I'll choose one of the squares on my perspective grid and click four times to create a box that defines the perspective of the ellipse. You may want to zoom in to make sure you're matching the perspective lines precisely. As you can see, the guide draws the ellipse within those bounds in the correct perspective. This is much more efficient than drawing these guides manually. The guide also shows the ellipse subdivided in two different ways. First, the solid line shows you the center of the ellipse as it relates to the perspective of the scene. These lines align with the vanishing points. This can be very useful for centering another smaller ellipse in the center, or perhaps a pole. What's missing is an option to subdivide the ellipse radially, like how you would cut a pizza or pie. This would make drawing wheels and other similar objects much easier. The second dashed line shows the actual center of the ellipse, not in perspective. This can be useful to help you visualize the direction a pole would point if it intersected the ellipse perfectly centered. By using both guides, I can draw a line intersecting the ellipse vertically, which gives you a base for a coat rack or maybe the shaft of a propeller, or by drawing the pole on the horizontal axis, I can make a lollipop laying flat on the ground. I suggest adding functions to duplicate and transform the ellipse guides because that would be helpful for drawing cylinders. If I have to manually draw the other end of this cylinder, I risk drawing a guide that is slightly different and doesn't align perfectly. 
Moving on to the next feature. In this version of Krita, you can now hold shift to make the sliders respond more accurately or slowly. It works for the sliders in the properties bar, but not all sliders will respond to it. Another intriguing new feature is the ability to paint on layer masks using blending modes. For example, I can add a transparency mask and select a high contrast brush like dry textured creases with the multiply blend mode and gray for my color. When I overlap strokes, I get a stronger buildup compared to strokes that I make by subtracting from the mask using the normal blend mode. As you can see, the normal blend mode has less contrast and appears flatter overall. Since masks are defined by black, white, and gray, blend modes can only affect the value of masks. But essentially, the buildup of light and dark will be stronger, weaker, or have different properties, depending on the blend mode you have selected. I'll have to play with this one for a while to figure out precisely how I might use it in my workflow, but I think it's a promising feature. How would you use this? Comment and let us know. The next feature we'll look at is the inclusion of color ramp sliders in the specific color selector and HSV HSL adjustment filter. I'll change the mode in the specific color selector to HSV, which is more intuitive than RGB for painting. These are much nicer than blank sliders for selecting and adjusting color. I'll try the HSV HSL adjustment filter next. I think this one needs a little more work, or maybe there is a bug. The color ramp for the hue does not align with the original color, nor does shifting it align the cursor with the new color, so I'm just confused by the necessity for a color ramp slider here. The saturation is always displayed as red when it should match the original color of the layer I'm adjusting. Value is acceptable as is, or it could be a color ramp that matches the color value of the layer. That's just my opinion. One of the complaints about Krita I've been hearing a lot is that some artists do not like to have to switch to an eraser brush, they would rather have an eraser tool. In this version of Krita, you can now enable customizable cursors for the eraser brushes so they can easily be distinguished from regular brushes while you're painting. If you're using a pen without an eraser on it, hopefully this makes it more clear when the eraser is selected. One final feature that excites me is the ability to edit multiple layers at once. You can now clear, cut, copy, and paste on multiple layers, and the layer order and opacity will be preserved. For example, I have this banana that has a bruise on it. I can make a selection of the lower half of the banana, select all the banana layers, and then cut and paste. This cuts the banana in half and puts the pieces on their own layers in the correct order. This is a small feature that could save artists who work with layers a lot of time. Unfortunately, you cannot transform the layers unless you group them first. Ideally, you'd just be able to transform them without that extra step. Now, if you could only paint and blend multiple layers at once, that would be something. That was a look at just a few of the new features in Krita 5.1. Check out their website for a full list of release notes. For more digital art tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.